who are you? <laughs> See, it's <this is> stupid <laughs> ass. <laughs> dudes would be hooping on the court. I'm sitting in the stands with the girls, and I'm roasting the dudes on the court. <laughs> the more you experience, the more you can imagine. I found myself reading books that would support my bias. I don't believe my imagination can go beyond that which I've experienced. And you say, you as who, who, who are you? I'm not gonna say I'm real in the funk, heavy, heavy, heavy. Like yeah, that. I ain't asked you what, you ask me. Freedom is not just doing whatever you want to when you want to, especially if there are certain goals in life you want to achieve. What does that even mean? That's, that's I, like I want to know. A, I know. See, there we go. That's that, a damn there we go. impossible question to answer. Exactly. Because the way so, I answer it, usually it will be what I am and not who I am. So? So who I am is you. Sit. Say, say, I'm say, you. Say, 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 say. I'm you. I'm Nelly. I'm Isaac. I'm that conservative dude, that Republican that I interviewed. I know not what is happening. <laughs> <laughs> and we're in. Welcome to Profits and Process. I'm your host, Ryan Grant. And uh, today's a episode that I'm looking forward to just because I know it'll be probably the most challenging episode I have this first season. With, uh, <laughs> that's how we started, bro. See, I didn't even get a chance to see. <laughs> off I am rip, your guest, Aldo Slade off Jr. Off rip. I didn't even get a chance to actually say why. It's cha- See, look, God. <laughs> it's challenging because... I I look at this man as a brother, a mentor, a confidant, someone who I respect wildly. And I'll be honest, in the spaces I respect him, I don't, there's not very many people that I, <laughs> so it's, there's a bar that he has set in many ways. I'm a man of many interests, and it seems like all my interests he has done. So there is a value that I I hold in what he brings to the table, in thought, in action, in perspective across the board. So also, he allows us to uh, shoot this beautiful podcast <laughs> in his crib. Alzo Slade, bro, you're he's a man of many. And we're going to get into it. So thank you, brother. For what up, player? <laughs> Kim Folk in this B.I.R. You know what I'm talking about? We're doing these icebreakers now because uh, Nelly loves a good icebreaker. Ain't she, no ice in here. She don't want me to get deep too fast because she wants, she wants people to get comfortable. But this oh, is your crib, so you can't icy, get me. Icy for them. Yeah. Yeah. It's for them. But you can't get any more comfortable. So first off, what are you listening to right now? I think it's just mainly genres of music. You know, you know, what's sad is sometimes I just put the playlist on, and you know, the algorithm just continues to play stuff, and you may not even know the artist yeah, or the yeah, name yeah, of yeah. the song, but you rocking with you it. You be vibing with it. Yeah, you be, be vibing with it. So I really don't know. I, I, really, don't, I, I really don't know who I be listening to sometimes. <laughs> but it be slapping though. It be, <laughs> but also depending on what I'm doing, because. Like when I'm studying, it's usually uh, the the genre is like post rock instrumental or like funk jazz instrumental, like no words, and so I could just get in the zone when I'm riding. elevated music, huh? Elevated music? No, bro, <laughs> nah, we ain't in no J C Penney's, bro, <laughs> no smooth jazz, bro, no, bro. You know Siggy Rose? No, nah. it's like uh, it's a post. I guess it's considered post rock. They're like uh, Radiohead without lyrics. That's okay, the best yeah, way I yeah. can describe it. Right, okay, I get that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, um, yeah, okay, that shit is smooth. That shit, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's, good, yeah, yeah, okay. that yeah, that's a good, that's yeah, a good yeah, yeah. description. And then uh, I think funk is probably my favorite genre of music. Like sick, late 60s, 70s yeah. funk. James Brown, get up off of that thing. So, yeah. But I ain't, you ain't studying that. I'm not, I, I know, I know James Brown heavy and I know... 
But I'm not going to say I'm real in the funk, heavy, heavy, heavy. Like yeah. That. But I ain't asked you no way. You asked me. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> Yo. Talk about why you picked the book or didn't pick the book. <laughs> Why? So, yeah, we make every guest pick yeah. a book. But since this is your crib, and all these damn books are yours, <laughs> and all these awards are yours, and you know every book, you didn't pick a book. You kept the book that's the, book, the, the, the foundational yeah. book is yours, because you're basically the foundation around this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it, the, the, the title of the book is Freedom, and it basically chronicles um, civil rights movement. Um, but not just civil rights movement, just freedom movements. Uh, around the world specifically related to Kim folks, you know. Or, but the, just the idea of freedom to me is is one that is uh, significant. Like just freedom in all aspects of my life. And um, sometimes I've been, I've subscribed to freedom too much. Um, and as I've matured, I've had to, I've had to rec recognize that uh, Freedom is not just doing whatever you want to, when you want to, and how you want to, um, especially if you, there are certain goals in life you want to achieve, you know. But basically, yes, freedom is, it. it is the undercurrent of my existence. How much do you say, like, the, the aspect of freedom, you know, a lot of people, they immediately think about, like, the physical aspect of freedom. With you being such a learned individual, how much of it starts like up here in in relation to when you think of freedom? I don't consider myself learned it all the way. You know, we we both in the same. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We, <laughs> <laughs> but I appreciate the 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 sentiment. You know, the, the definitely freedom here. I, when I think of freedom, I like freedom presupposes you have the ability to choose. The ability to choose presupposes you have options to choose from. Here you go. So when I think about it, if I'm able to increase the number of options I'm able to choose from. I directly am able to increase my freedom. And that's why, cats like, we always interested in so much stuff because when you increase your vocabulary of experience, then you directly increase your freedom because I don't believe, I don't believe my imagination can go beyond that which I've experienced. So uh -huh. the more I experience, the more I can imagine. Yeah. And some people may say, well, you can't, you ain't never experienced a unicorn. Well, I've exper experienced a horse. And I've experienced a horn. Yeah. And through intellectual innovation, I can put, yeah, put it the together, two together. Yeah. Or, or and, something, a reference point or something. Gave yeah, you, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so the more you experience, the more you can imagine. And the more you can imagine, the more free you can be. So why not take the time in life to experience as much as you can so you can maximize this thing that we got that I really don't understand? Welcome like, to Profits and Process. We don't even need to say more because he just basically <laughs> explained why we do what we do. <laughs> and shit. That's why we brethren. Yeah, God. That's why man. we brethren. And this is what I love because Zo can so beautifully articulate in that buttery soft voice of his why we are interested in things. You are a direct reason why this podcast even happened. And... I presented this to you a while ago, and I came in this space, and immediately, the type of individual you are with the conversations that you create, you know, the interest that you have where you've been, to be able to step into your, your home, a space that I know you curated intentionally with the desire to have healthy conversations with yeah. individuals, <clears throat> I immediately was like, this is what I want to create. <clears throat> excuse me, vibe-wise, yeah. for this podcast. And not knowing whether or not you'd be comfortable with it, I was like, all right, maybe I ask, or maybe I just like yeah. take away what he got from this and try to create our own thing. But I was like, ah, I don't know. And I'm just super fortunate and appreciate that you were willing to do this because it literally, so many people I know immediately step in here, they always say like, oh, they know right away. This is a serious conversation. Whatever we're talking about, you know, yeah. and it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be heavy. It's gonna be, you know, yeah, developmental, and it's gonna be <clears throat> hold weight. I think that I want people to think about these conversations afterwards. Yeah, and that's the type of space that you've created. So I'm just super thankful, man. I appreciate that. Well, I'm grateful that it is. It has come to what my vision for it was. You know what I'm saying? Vision, like it was. 
Like, I mean, but I, like, I create, I created, I created, you're right, though. I wanted to be like, when folks walk in here, they be like, oh, yeah, this ain't no man cave. This is, yeah, 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 we, yeah. We talking about something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, I love that, man. Speaking of the space, I think is is as relevant to, and important to acknowledge that this is the last place I saw Netic was here in this library. Yeah. With a book in his hand. And he was <laughs> loving it, wasn't yeah. he? Yeah. Yeah, this is home for us. Yeah. You know, and I, there was such a level of excitement when we came here. I remember, was it Portia and Charlotte came downstairs? Like, yeah. Portia came downstairs and we're like, you okay? And he looked at him like, are you crazy? Are you crazy? <laughs> <laughs> right. This is heaven for you, baby. <laughs> <laughs> He's learning, dog. You know what I'm saying? You know, I always ask everybody the first question, man. What do you do, dog? I be chilling, bro. I just be living, dog. What does that mean? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> You know, Give me something. I'll be sliding, gliding, slipping, <laughs> slipping and dipping, showing and glowing. You feel me? You know what I'm saying? Oh, give me something about all these damn... Well, how'd you get these damn awards? <laughs> all right, all right. We ain't talking... We don't need to talk about that. Storytelling is how I got them awards. Yeah, what's that mean? Because I, I like that. Uh, let me... Okay, this is what I do. I... I love to... I love to laugh, I love to learn, and I love to teach. And I found a way to, to live, to make a living doing those things, incorporating those things through storytelling. And yeah. so um, whether it be documentary news or podcasting or, you know, even conversations like this, I, you know, I really love learning and like a still to this day, like a, a giddy little kid with a new toy, it's like when I learn something, I'm like, yo, you, yo, y'all need to know about yeah, this. Yeah. You know, and not necessarily in a patronizing way, which it used to be, and we can get into that later. Yeah. <laughs> uh but like, yo, did yo, did y'all know this? Like true this is something that folks need to know. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And so how do you present that? And I just <clears throat> found my way into um filmmaking news, documentary news, um, working with Vice. So all of those awards were through uh, stories told through my work at Vice News. You know, I know you as, I know you as a comedian. Yeah. I know you as a philosopher. I know you as a teacher. I know you as a journalist. I found out you were a pilot. So now you're becoming a chess master. No 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 I'm learning chess, not becoming a a master in of myself. Soon come, yeah. Soon come, but how? Yeah, like how do all those things relate to who you are? Just learning, dog. I don't because I don't I don't I don't really know why humans exist. It doesn't make sense to me. Like, even if I subscribe to the way I was brought up with regard to Christianity, which I don't necessarily subscribe to that in the way that I was brought up to believe, but even within that context, you ask, God, why do you make human beings? I still ain't found an answer that makes sense to me, right? And then you take, let's take God out of it, and you like, the Big Bang, whatever. Why do humans exist? I don't know. I have no clue. And you and I have had this conversation around, like, None of this really means anything. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. Like the and it's it sounds depressing that nothing has meaning, but it's beautiful in that we can ascribe meaning to whatever we want. Whatever. Like we've had yeah. several conversations yes, around yeah. this. So this is not this is not some groundbreaking yeah, thought yeah, yeah. or no, idea, no, no, no. right? So if I can ascribe meaning to whatever I want and I don't really know why humans exist then let me just try to learn as much as I can to try to figure out who I am, who you are, who the world is. Yeah. Because otherwise, I don't know what's worth my time and worthwhile, you know? What else am I going to do? Yeah. What else, do, what, what else is there to do besides learn, love, and laugh? They ain't... Huh? You can spend your money on these cars. I mean, I listen, I want to look fly, I want to, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but at the same time... I want to try to understand 
while I'm here on earth, what the fuck is going on <laughs> with me, with you, with the, you know, with the world? So yeah. that's an indirect, indirect way to back to, to answer your question, like comedy, philosophy, journalism, teaching, all those things. The kind of pillars. They're, yeah, they, yeah. they connect it. Yeah. They all they all have to do with human observation. There we go. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's all it all has to do with looking inward, looking outward, and trying to connect them, right? Now the whole the pilot thing is <laughs> when I man, I was uh I was in high school, bro. I watched Top Gun. <laughs> <laughs> And that, that thing got me, bro. I was like, man, I want to fly jets. And my pops used to take me to air shows, you know, the Thunderbirds yeah. and the Blue Angels. I wanted to be a Blue Angel. It's a badass to be a pilot, right? You know what I'm saying? Yo, yo, I wanted to be a Blue Angel. And my parents didn't have enough money to uh, send me to no, you know, flight school and nothing, yeah. you know. I said, man, when I grow up, I want to learn how to fly a plane. And I was 31. And at 31, I recognized I was grown. And I was like, I don't know how to fly a plane. And yeah. I said, I when said I, I grow wanna... up, I want to learn how to fly a plane. <laughs> so I just went and learned how to fly a plane because it's just something that I wanted to do. Yeah. Like learning chess. It's just like, it's, it's, and you know this, bro. Like, it, I feel like having this kind of conversation with you is kind of like preaching to the choir because, uh, yeah, yeah. you know, because you, you, you understand where I'm coming from is that, Everything that you learn from everyone that you learn from, you just are learning more about who you are. What are some of the things that allowed you to feel confident to step into these spaces that are unknowns? When you're a kid, it's okay to be bad at things. Because you're learning yeah, yeah. and, you know, the world. My daughter said to me that the other day. I, they that? asked me, matter of fact, something happened. And I said, they, they, it was about them They're doing something. And I remember I, I literally responded. It was like, well, how do you feel when daddy does that? And they were like, well, it's not the same because I'm a kid. And I was like, well, what's that mean? And they were like, I'm learning. Bruh. And I was like, let me tell you something. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Let me tell you something. And so Daddy's yeah. learning too. Yes, bro. And so when you when you do when you when you're doing the 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 mental and egotistical gymnastics with yourself as an adult, yeah. right? Okay, oh, oh, Alzo studied philosophy in graduate school. Oh, Alzo does, does this. Oh, he's smart. People, you know, people you know, expect yeah. oh you know. be like, oh, I know he played chess. <laughs> <laughs> You done backed yourself in the corner, boy. <laughs> Yo, it's like, oh, so let's let's get a game of chess. I'm like, duh, 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 duh. <laughs> and so here I am, right, thinking, and this is so stupid. It's so stupid, and and it's it's the antithesis of the very thing that we're talking about. Yeah, the love of learning is when you allow your ego to stand in the way of you. Learning something that you are interested that yeah. you're interested, especially yeah. if you're interested if you're in interested it. in it. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So here I am, like, man, when I start chess, I'm gonna be terrible at it. Folks gonna be whooping my ass, people that expect me to know better. But and so I'm so all of this is rooted in optics. Yeah, 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 yeah. Which has nothing to do with how I should be existing as a student. Of the world, yeah. If you want to learn, then if you, you want to learn, learn it's then you, all learning, bro. Come learn. on now, yeah. come on now. And I'm, I'm actually ashamed to say it took me this long, but now I'm at the point where, bro, listen. I sit down with a five year old. That joker whoop me. I'd be like, "You a cold, bro?" No, <laughs> <laughs> oh, nah, man. I yeah. And you're, you're decent, bro. I can see you playing. You play with intention. So and then, obviously, when you become an adult, you have other responsibilities, and there's time. Yeah, 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 and stuff. yeah. But but I also feel like closest to God when I'm learning. So if if I find myself in a funk, it's probably because of one of two reasons. I've not studied in a while or I've not trained in a while. I like that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And and it's and it'll sneak up on you quick. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's be easy like, to, to <laughs> Yeah, it'll be like, hey, hey, what? Yeah. And then you be like, ah. Yeah, I'm, I I need to 
I need to get I back, get back on my shit. Yeah, get I back, need to get back in the, in the gym. You know what I'm saying? And 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 both of those things are associated directly with mind and body. So it's just like you know, Kim folks, when you when when you go to your uh, your great auntie house and you walk in with a soggy face, the first thing she gonna ask you got something to eat. Cause we can't even deal with what's going on yeah, here yeah, unless yeah, yeah. you know yeah, you gotta, all feed, gotta feed you. Yeah, yeah absolutely. That's a beautiful way yeah. of saying it, dude. Um, you gotta feed yourself. Yeah, and I think that that's why, that's why I say your life has to be therapy for life. You yes, gotta God. make sure you're giving yourself the things that are therapeutic, so that you can handle the rest of the things that you don't have control of. Mm -hmm. um, and it's hard, and sometimes it is. Hey man, hard, just, just do something that you're interested in. Try, take one step towards that. One step. And boy, don't mess up and see some results. Yeah, you off to the races. <laughs> you off to the races. When you stepped into, from what I know, the journalism aspect, how does that like bring value to your inner thoughts? Because with Vice, you were doing things that you were in the shit sometimes, and there was such a wide variety of conversations, <laughs> topics, interests that when you're asking people these questions, are you just in real time, allowing this to kind of affect your inner thoughts? Are you kind of taking a neutral ground? Are you allowing it to process how you see the world, how you see people? Mm. I don't be thinking about none of that Okay. when I'm sitting and talking to them. Um, when I sit and have a conversation with folks, it's rooted in 100% curiosity. It's bittersweet because if... You sit down and you have a list of questions. It becomes like an interview. Yeah, I'm trying to, yeah. Yeah, it becomes almost, sometimes it can become an interrogation if the person on the other side is seemingly opposed to you in the ideology. Questions that, yeah, exactly. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't have an agenda. I, I'm not trying to antagonize folks. I'm not trying to give people a promotional video yeah. as a commercial for themselves. I'm just like trying to understand your perspective. So if I'm sitting down with a, a staunch conservative, you know, that seemingly uh, would have an opposing ideology as I, just optically, just yeah, like, yeah, just yeah. About just the, you know what I'm saying? It's, a, it's this older, gray-haired white man from Virginia, West Virginia, and here, here's me, you know, black dude that's urban, whatever, Right, that don't matter to me. Because my default is that, okay, you believe what you believe for a reason. You think the way yeah, that yeah. you think for a reason. Maybe it's something that I'm missing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's provide a space and opportunity for us to understand, to understand each other. Yeah. Now, if you say something that don't make sense to me, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to question it. I'm going to be like, I don't know, Congressman. That sounds a little funny to me, <laughs> you know? And he may push back. Yeah. But at the end of the conversation, neither one of us leaves offended, leaves feeling that we've been attacked. It's been, we still may be on the opposite ends of the spectrum in terms of ideology, but we've had an honest, fair conversation. I do believe that most of our disconnects are just because of lack of understanding. 100%, dog. Like, yeah. On a human level, most of us are doing things for the same reason. Yes. The bitterness on our end kind of gets that. You're like, oh, I, I'm i not allowing it. I'm not justifying it, but I get it. <laughs> Absolutely. If you, if you just think about, I mean, maybe on, on some transcendental aspect of things, one could say you had control over how you came into this world. Yeah. If you subscribe to that, but just on a pedestrian level, you came into this world like this. I came into this world like this. So if you if you born <clears throat> white, male, Midwest, you grew up like that. That's what you know. You become a middle-aged white man working a nine-to-five blue-collar job in Pennsylvania, which is not the Midwest, but yeah, I'm just yeah. saying, we're in Pennsylvania, and you love the Steelers. 
you got kids at home, they be nagging you. Sometimes your wife annoying you. <laughs> Sunday is your day to yeah. watch your Steelers. Yeah. It's for you to turn the world off, sit back in your lazy boy with your beer. And be entertained. And be you know entertained. Yes. Boom. Yeah. And here come some little black boy, <laughs> little young black man, then, then when the national anthem being played, he going to kneel. Now, my, my grandfather then fought in World War II. This is what I know. Yeah, the absolutely. flag means this, this. This is the way I was raised. Yeah. And I'm looking at this black man who made millions of dollars talking about yeah. violence in the black community. Ain't nobody shot yeah, I'm, you. I'm blue collar as it gets. I am middle class. Pay for my exactly. kids' tuition. I'm a hardworking individual. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ain't nobody hand me nothing. And you're going to go on TV and interrupt my time of peace and serenity with my Pittsburgh Steelers. I'm pissed. If I'm <laughs> pissed. I'm pissed. Yeah. But then inversely, black, single mother, single father, got a young, raising a young black boy on a roll, on his way to college, get stopped by the police, pull out a cell phone, get life, shot. Life ended. Beat. Life ended. Yeah. Life ended. Now, white man in, in Pittsburgh, single black parent here of a of a of a of a murder child at the hands of law enforcement. Now, how are these people gonna see eye to eye? It's possible. It is it is yeah. it is possible. But it's gonna take but it's not probable. Yeah. Especially without the willingness. The willingness to actually hear. You see what I'm saying? And so, when I, when I, as a journalist, when I'm sitting down with folks, I'm like, let me hear. Let me listen to what it is that you have to say. Let me listen to your perspective. Yeah. And obviously, I juxtapose it with my life experiences and it's rooted, like as I said, rooted in curiosity. And see if we can come to an understanding of why we disagree and if our disagreement makes sense after we've heard each other. And many times the disagreement don't really make sense after we've hurt each other. Yeah. Loyalty is an interesting thing. And it usually depends on the experience. Yes. People that have a phenomenal experience with that flag, they're going to be loyal to it. They're going to be loyal to it. And people that haven't, they're going to look at it as no. So it's kind of... It's simple to me. I'm not saying it's easy. It's you not, know? Yeah, yeah. It's simple, not easy. Yeah. Simple does not equate yeah. to easy. It's yeah. simple, but it's not easy Absolutely. in relation to, that's the human yeah. aspect. Uh, why you eat so much fish? I grew up on the coast. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? Exactly. It's like, that's why my diet is what it is. Exactly. When you look at the world, what do you see your personal responsibility? Is there a personal responsibility with how you maneuver your interests? How you maneuver your curiosities? It's the old saying, when you know better, you do better. So I can't, I can't simply just react off yeah. of emotion when I've made a commitment to try to understand some individual or a group of individuals. Yeah. You know, so if, if I'm in the street, and a white dude call me nigga. First of all, I'm going to laugh. I was going to say, why would he do that? Yeah. Well, first of all, I'm going to laugh. I'm going to be like, that's all you got, dog? Huh? Bro, that's like so 1960s, bro. <laughs> <laughs> like that's, that's what you, that, you think that's going to get me? You know. You better than me. I might give a quick one. Yeah. Tell him I, do it I, just, I might give a quick one of those, and then, I, then I'll go to that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Then yeah. I'll make him laugh. <laughs> but it's like. If, if that happened to me in the street, back in the day, instincts reaction to just yeah. slap the fire out of that joker, like swing off on it. Yeah. Now, one, that doesn't... You're not threatened. I'm not yeah, threatened, yeah. and I know, I know what he's trying to do, and he's not going to be successful, but even then, it's like, that's pitiful, bro. You, like, I... I understand where it's coming from, and it's a sad place. And I'm not going to stoop 
to the level to where I'm going to give you the reaction that you want. Yeah. Or the reaction that you don't want, which is these hands. Yeah. You know? It seems like these are very pedestrian examples. You get, so, so, so this is curiosity about myself, right? Learning about myself. So the main reason most people fight, like just think about elementary school, middle school, high school, college, in the club. The main reason dudes square up on each other is because somebody felt disrespected. Absolutely. You done stepped on my shoe, you done looked at my girl wrong, you done whatever. If I'm walking down the street and somebody bumps me and they don't say excuse me, back in the day I might get vexed. Now, no. Because I, and it's not because of them, it's now I've matured in my life to recognize that the reason that I got vexed before is because I felt insignificant. Now, every, I can't, I'm averse to absolute, so I'm not going to say. I'll say you, but every, just, yeah, discomfort. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. Yeah. for the most part, many of us have a, a, a fear of being insignificant. Yeah. So if you don't say, excuse me, you've denied my existence. But as soon as you say, my bad, oh, it's diffused. This is why Instagram so popular. TikTok. Yeah, you can see where our values are, are being. Yeah, because you like, style. look at me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got something to it's say. Same, I man. need you to know that I matter. But as soon as you feel insignificant, bruh, that's when the problems start. You feel disrespected. You know, you know what I'm saying? And yeah. so uh, self-analysis and curiosity of self allowed me to reach that point where I understood that the main reason that most of us do things is to feel significant and how does that relate to me? And Okay. Yeah. Now I'm gonna now, yeah, yeah, yeah. now I'm gonna go to the space of like let's, let's, which yeah. is kind of where you're going, but let's go there. Where the and we we've talked about this, where it's the gift and the curse with us in our regards to the amount of interest and we're just craving knowledge. But how does that play a part in re reference to like how we see ourselves? Oh man! It's, is there a piece of mind? Is there ever a piece of man, mind? That shit sucks, bro. <laughs> yeah, it's, die, it's bro. like it's, hard, man. It's There's tough, never a bro. piece of mind in relation to uh, mm -mm. the growth of. And you know, when you talk about like insignificant, that baseline changes, and it yeah. never because once you learn something, that kind of becomes insignificant because it's like. You've gotten what you've gotten from it. And it's like, oh, yeah, it was beautiful, but I'm good. I need to learn, and I need to continue to. And not to say that you can't continue <sighs> to learn in, in every space from that place, but how do you, like, is it just accumulation? Is it, is, is it to some degree just an accumulation of? It's, a, it's like it's a clock ticking. It's, it, the, the clock of life is ticking. I don't know when I'm going to go. And I'm trying to learn as much as I can before I get up out this joker. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, okay, I could get a PhD and become a professor and become a master. Like, I could master the discipline the of philosophy, yeah, yeah, the yeah, field yeah. of philosophy. But that's at the expense of me learning something else. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I could become... Uh, 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 a pilot at these air shows and all of that, if I were to focus and concentrate, but that's at the expense of learning something else. Yeah. And so it is a curse in that respect, but then all of those things are ornaments. Learning philosophy, learning chess, learning to fly a plane, learning to play, I don't know, uh, Learn to ride a horse, like they're ornamental to a degree. It really just comes back to how do I exist as I learn all of these things? Yeah, does that make sense? No, I understand that because I'm not sure if I if you understand look, if it. If you while look I'm at talking. okay, so if you think of it as like the tree of Zoe, 
And when you say ornaments, and I could even say branches. Branches, maybe branches is right. Ornaments sounds like it's like it's performative. The ornaments could be the accolades that come along with mm. the learning. Mm -hmm. But the branches are essentially learning. And one branch might be, like for instance, you might take piloting further than you take chess. Mm -hmm. So that might be a heavier branch, a bigger branch than it would be chess as opposed to training. Training is a big branch for you, but it also has many different okay, smaller so branches. I'm picking, up, I'm picking up what you're putting down, so let me carry it a little go. way. Go for it. I feel like philosophy is a, is a strong branch. Yeah. Piloting, not so much. Because with philosophy, with jujitsu, with chess, I feel like those things are strong in that I'm able to retrieve lessons about who I am through those activities. Yeah. Through more philosophy of, for more sure. More of a pillar. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because you know, when we're on the mat in jujitsu, like you having conversations with yourself. Yeah. Am I ready to give up? Is 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 it possible for me to find a way out of this? Yeah. Is it possible for me to find a way to further this? There's a trust. There's a, a trust. You know what I'm saying? There's, there's all of those things. Do I trust this dude? You know exactly. You know what I'm saying? And so those vocations in which you're learning about people and the world, and it also allows you to learn about yourself, bro. You you can't. That's the that's the perfect trifecta right there. Yeah. You, just, you know, it's endless. It's endless. And that's why that's why I love philosophy so much because it is a huge under umbrella under which so many disciplines fall. Yeah. You know? Yeah, that's why I became connected to it. And uh, to hear, you know, the amount of time that you've given to it, you have such a knowledge that you can pull from reference-wise. I think my my experience became more about more than the knowledge of you've clearly read way more books in that space so your ability to articulate is like yeah i felt that but hearing you articulate foundations of philosophy are is perfect man i don't know it's 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 smooth but it ain't but it ain't nothing that you ain't got though no that, it's, yeah, it's, that's that, what I'm yeah, it's that, like yeah. oh no yeah, it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. it's yeah. like yeah 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 <laughs> And that's what people be like, yeah, yeah, that's it. That's that's the way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the way. And I still get that. And that's why it's dope to be just around yourself with folks that, you know, that got skill sets intellectually, physically, that that you can always learn from. You know? What's what's something now that you feel there's a curiosity for and or even if it's not a new curiosity, something that you are, you're enthusiastic about now, you know, and I, in the sense that we just started training together, I can see that in you, but I want to see what, what are some of the things that right now you're like excited about in regards to whether it be what you're doing interest wise. Uh, yeah. Jujitsu is one for sure. Um, just martial arts in general. Cause most martial arts have a philosophical undercurrent. Absolutely, you know, art, art baby. It's yeah, like, yeah, there's something. It, yeah. yeah, and it's 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 beautiful. And so, if you think of the trifecta of mind, body, and soul, they incorporate all three of them. And what does it do for you? Um, it makes my body hurt. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can speak to that. <laughs> I can talk about pain. That is, that's a real acknowledgement. It makes my body hurt. Because that kind of makes it counterintuitive on a base level. Why would we do things mm -hmm. as a human that we acknowledge every time? This shit hurts. There has to be an intrinsic understanding of value. Whether mm -hmm. it's subconscious, mm -hmm. unconscious, whatever mm -hmm. it may be. Mm -hmm. If we can acknowledge... Because it's almost like self sabotage It's like mm -hmm, destructive. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and that mm -hmm. becomes counterintuitive. It's mm -hmm, like, why would you mm -hmm. do something if you recognize this shit hurts? And I, you know, I've spoke about this in relation to ball. 
but I want you to please articulate why you think, why why we do this. Why do we put ourselves in spaces? Yeah, man. Ain't no ain't no growth without friction. There you go. Ain't no change without friction. Thank you. You know what I'm saying? Like you, <laughs> it, it, that's physics, what they say. Tells that's what, you yeah, that. that's like, what we were taught, right? If I move this yeah. microphone, <laughs> yeah, there's friction. Yeah, there's yeah. resistance. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying, Bruh, And it's not just in martial arts, jujitsu. Man, I be you. You sitting here talking about? Uh, you know, I read all these books. Man, this shit ain't easy. I, <laughs> <laughs> man, I be sitting at that desk, bro. Like, listen, man. When I went to graduate school. This is no lie, man. I had, initially, I had an intellectual inferiority complex. When I was an undergrad, I didn't take any formal philosophy classes. Yeah. It was, while I was a junior, senior in college, I read, like, my roommate, we started talking about, like, why we think the way we think, believe what we believe, and and I read The Miseducation of the Negro and, yeah, yeah. and Dr. Carter G. Wilson in there said, if you control a man's thoughts, you control his actions. And I was like, don't nobody control my thoughts or my actions. <laughs> and I read, read further and I was like, ooh, maybe. Maybe, maybe, actually, maybe, maybe, maybe actually, you know what? You know what now that I think about it. Yeah. And then that just sent me down a path of reading all the Revolutionary 101 books. The the Anthony Browders, the the Dr. Naeem Akbars, the Stolen Legacy, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. you know, all of these. And I'm reading the books that tell me uh, black folks did everything. White folks ain't do nothing. <laughs> and if white folks say they did something, it's because they stole it's it from black folks. Yeah, it's all a lie. it's all a lie. And you know, them books that them books that uh, ain't got no bibliography, <laughs> works cited. They, they, they didn't, it's like on their- I know printed. Their, their one million yeah, generation you know, copy. The, the sheet is the, high, it's, it's angled. Yeah, and it, it, was run out of ink, it was run out of ink when they was printed, you know. And, and and then I found myself, this is a long way to answering your question, but I found myself um, reading books that would support my bias. Yeah. That would support what I wanted them, what I wanted to, what I what I thought I wanted to know. But thank God there was a voice in the back. I was like, mm, man, something ain't right about this. Like these jokers, like I want to know more. And I go to the back of the book. And they can't tell me where they got the information from. Yeah. You know? And so I said, man, I think I want to go, I want to try to study this for real. Like, I want to try to study philosophy for real. And I ain't have no formal academic training in philosophy because I was a communications and history uh, major, in uh, double major yeah. in school. Uh, try to make this story short, but... The <laughs> so and oh and so going back to like ah man everybody need to know this information so you know I'm reading the yeah. revolutionary one everybody need to know this people don't read no more so I'm gonna make films I want to make historical films and documentaries to teach people about what's in these books I mean I started wearing a dashiki yeah, yeah all the- <laughs> I was there but you know what I'm saying and you go down is, that path go down yeah. that path bro I'm wearing the black fist around my neck the onk ring all of that stuff bro and then cats like do oh, we have pictures. Yes, Are there maybe, videos maybe, and pictures maybe, of this? Maybe, yes. Maybe so, yeah, so we gonna get them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We need <laughs> them. There we go. Now we need them. I was student. My brother. I, I was. See, I, I should have showed up. Oh, I am. Incre- <laughs> yeah. I should have showed up looking like he, that. You just showed up smelling like yeah. uh, Egyptian <laughs> musk and patchouli. <laughs> should I have my chew stick? Yeah, my your chew stick. stick but, yeah, exactly. So, man, I was, you know, on campus, you know, just trying to spit, you know, all this stuff. And uh, I was like, man, let me see if I can. I graduated, worked for like a year and a half, but then I was like, man, I wanna, I wanna go to school, graduate school, and maybe study theology or philosophy to try to see if I can hang with the big boys. But I also was interested in film, so I said, I'm just gonna apply to some of the best schools in LA. Yeah, yeah. To study philosophy and then keep one foot in the, in the film, film game. Yeah, yeah. So I came to, uh, I looked at Loyola Marymount, UCLA, USC, and and I was like, man, I went online to their websites, the philosophy program websites, to not just them, but like Harvard, Yale, all of them. And I would print the syllabus for classes that I would want to take 
and then I go to the bookstore and I buy the books. So after after That's some shit I would do, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some of these books is them. And I'm so always trying to figure out a way. Trying to figure out a way, <laughs> dog. You ain't gonna let me in the yeah. front door. I'm gonna figure out. You know what I'm saying? So I go home after work, bro, and I'm reading these. Bro, I'm reading Emmanuel Kant by myself, the Critique of Pure Reason by myself, Heidegger by my. Bro, I don't know what. What, what you talking about? <laughs> I'm, yo, I'm getting secondary sources, tertiary yeah, yeah, sources, yeah, yeah, yeah. and this before the internet was popping like this. So ain't no videos, ain't no, ain't no YouTube clips of professors explaining none of this, bro. This is before you even in school. This, but this is, but this is after I graduated from undergrad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you didn't and, even go and, to the masters and I, yet. Yeah, and I ain't going to the masters yet uh, because I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to see what they own. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I'm reading it. I'm rolling, I'm rolling my sleeves. Up. I'm trying to get busy, dog. So. I finally get, I get the gumption to I apply. I took the, you know, that the, the, they had the, the GRE, yeah, I had to yeah. do all that. And I was like, man, my undergrad grades lackluster at best. I'm, I'm, right. I'm, I'm like, still scared. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> that, that's yeah. probably right the reason why I'm like, mm. right. I'm like a 2-8. You know who, you know tell, who you telling? <laughs> man, we, 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 we. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I ran well. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> My cultural capital was yeah, on point. Was I, I was, I was reading everything. I was student government yeah. president. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so I did. That actually, I'm gonna be honest with you. That makes me feel good. Yeah, knowing that you were, <laughs> you still it because I definitely I've been. Bruh, yes, dog. My joint C high C average. So then I knew I knew on paper I ain't match up with the other cat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was applying. And so I made an appointment with the the director of the graduate philosophy program at Loyola, Marymount, here in LA. Flew out here, put myself up in a hotel, and I went, I was like, man, listen, I may not be good on paper, but if you if you sit across from me and you see the commitment and the dedication that I have to learning in my eyes. And with this mouthpiece I got, we, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to try to at least equal what these other folks are on paper. Yeah. And uh, I got accepted. Bro, that first semester, Jesus Cristo, boy. I know, I know it was. Bro, that first, look, let me, let me see. Look, I'm going to go and pull this. Hold up, hold up. This first semester, bro, I had to take this class. Look at this. No, That's just one class, bro. Yo, did we? And y'all are reading the bruh, works out of this, bro. Let me tell you something. I had an intellectual inferiority complex because I would be in the library, and this is one class, which is real, bro. That's a like no. Imagine this is you in your masters, getting your masters, getting program. my masters. You already are studied, have learned, and everything, and you still Everybody, out here they, like the, the people who run the program have said. You belong here. Yeah, and you still lie. And in my head, I'm, bro, it would take me sometimes 30 minutes to get through one page. Uh, that's the collected works of Bernard Lonergan. So Loyola Marymount is a Jesuit school. This dude is a, is a Jesuit um, uh, philosopher, and he speaks on like self-appropriation and all these other things. I mean, Let me and, just read one line, and I don't know where. I just pulled this shit out. This is insight. Accordingly, if we specialize the general heuristic structure by adding further alternative hypothesis, we are led to distinguish between natural solutions, relatively supernatural solutions, <laughs> and absolutely supernatural solutions. What in the fuck? <laughs> now, of course, I don't know what we're talking about, but what are we talking about? <laughs> <laughs> what? Hey, so, bruh, so <laughs> we gonna put this up there. <laughs> So I'm walking around campus with that and other books. They assigning readings. You reading, you reading a hundred some pages a week. Easy. Yeah. Easy. And and what I they don't expect you to to understand everything. But yeah. what they do expect is you to have read it. So yeah. then when you come to the come to class, you can discuss. That you can you got a foundation from which you can discuss it. And I'm not mad. I respect that. Right. That's what it, yeah, that's right. That's, and I would say, I would say the and this is this is this is where the answer to your question, which I don't forget. I don't even remember the question. And yeah, me, what, me neither. Who, you remember the question? I know you don't right. know. No. 
but this is this it was a um this was a point in my life that was very significant. Yeah. In graduate school, in the first semester. Because I remember the the, the first year, because I remember there's two times. One was uh it was a seminar, we in a conference room. The professor is up there talking, standing before us, and she's at the whiteboard. Nobody ever used the whiteboard, not even her. Class is at like from 7 to 10 p.m. And it's like 9.45, bro, I'm tired. I'm tired. I've read the work, and she's asking the class, what is the author trying to say here? Everybody who raised their hand is incorrect. And what they're saying is not what I got from it. Yeah. But since they were wrong, I assumed what that I you were thought do it was just wrong. Because it's like just well, if these just by probability, right, these oh, folks yeah. come from Yale, Xavier, Stanford. Yeah. Here I come from Prairie View A and M University, HBCU in Texas, which I love to death. Yeah. Shout them you out. You know. Yeah. Shout them out. You know yeah. what I'm saying? You see purple and gold all day. That. So it's nine forty five, going on ten o'clock. I'm tired. And she really ain't trying to let us go until we get this. Yeah. I was just like, out of exhaustion and being ready to go, I said, I got, can I approach? She said, yeah, yeah. can I use the, the whiteboard? And everybody was like, huh? Because nobody ever used the whiteboard. So I go up there and my very rudimentary drawings, <laughs> bruh, I draw a visual metaphor of what I think is happening. And the professor said, that's it. Bruh. I was really too tired <laughs> to celebrate in that you moment. Wanted to pop it. You wanted to pop, I wanted you wanted to pop it. <laughs> Bruh, listen. You wanted to pop that. <laughs> listen. And then the second time, I'll never forget, man, Dr. Jeffrey Wilson is a professor I, I have a lot of respect for. He taught a class on Immanuel Kant. And at the on the first day of class, this joker said, this will be the most difficult class you will have in your entire academic career, even if you go on to get a PhD. Oh, shit. He well, claimed that. He claimed support. that. Yeah, he, bruh. And he ain't lie. It, it, I could bring them books down. Critique of Pure Reason. And at the beginning of the, at like the first couple of weeks, he passed out a paper for you to sign your name, um, to a specific topic in which you would have to present to the class. Yeah. And at this time in my uh, in my life, I was also wrestling with the with my spiritual belief, my religious belief. So what I chose was around like Kant's exposition of God and you know, mm -hmm. transcendental and whatnot. And when it came time for you to present, a week in advance, you had to print copies, give them to the class, allow them to read them, and make their critiques. So when you present they had to come and, and, and ask questions. Destroy you or whatever. You're, you're, yeah. Fuck you up. Bro, I'm nervous, dog. I spend hours in the library, hours on top of hours on top of hours, and a book stacked up, bro. Highlighters, pitting like, my book, look, you, it were more... More lines were not highlighted than highlighted. <laughs> it looked like a coloring book. Like really? yeah, exactly. So exactly. And so I finally get to the time I got to present. I read my paper. Now, Critique of Pure Reason is one of Kant's like, main works. I, re I do read the paper, and Dr. Wilson said, does anyone have any questions for Mr. Slade? It got quiet. Are you all sure that there are no questions about this paper? As if, like, there's a lot of questions that should be asked yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. And nobody said anything. And he said, so if, if, if no one has any questions, then aside from a few things that I will address, in the future, if any one of you have any trouble trying to understand what Kant is up to in his book, Critique of Pure Reason, I suggest you refer back to Mr. Slade's paper. Motherfucker, boy. Tighten up, tighten up, boy. <laughs> tighten up. 
Bruh, just that. Bruh. Uh, hey, yo, on the outside, I was, I was cool. You know, I was cool, bruh. On the inside, I was like, you acted like you've been there, but what? But. <laughs> and then, but then this, this was also, this was also uh, a lesson. This was a test, rather. After class, two or three of my, my colleagues came up to me who also had papers due in the next few weeks and asked if I could help them with theirs. And I paused, thought about it, and I said, listen, man, I worked hard for this. And I'm here to tell you, I don't have the answers. <laughs> I said, but if you, if, if you want to wanna study together, yeah, we yeah, can yeah, roll yeah. our sleeves up and get to it and try to figure it out. But this but, ain't on but, some I don't know. Yeah, 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 but, yeah, but to be clear, it ain't like I'm the master of this shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm still learning. Word. You know? It would have been easy for you to then take that on and be like, yeah, I got you. Like, yeah. I, nah, I'll show you what I what I know and everything like that, as opposed to saying, nah, we can we can keep learning together. Yeah. Because I wasn't confident that I knew this in the first <laughs> Right. When I handed you Don't that paper, I wasn't confident. Yeah, 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 yeah. Don't get it twisted. Yeah. But, um, I mean, and it's all in the, the, just the spirit of growth and learning, dog. That whole time you're talking, I didn't listen to nothing you said. And <laughs> I, but you heard it, though. But I heard it. And I really do see that as proactive within your fear. Yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah. not allowing your fear to knock you off of your process. Or insecurity. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. Not allowing that to deter you from your curiosities, your learning and, and growth. Mm -hmm. Because it, it could have been really easy and it would have been understandable. If you would have been like, yo, nah, I'm good like those folks. Everybody, your world probably would have been, there would have been a lot of people in your world that would have said, I get it. And you can keep reading. You can you can read the books on your own. Yeah. You know, you can yeah. still learn. And yeah. Yeah. It wouldn't it wouldn't mean you weren't learned, but to be willing to take that that quote unquote leap of faith or that uh that idea of, you know what, nah, I'm gonna stay in this. I don't really know. I don't really know. I don't know what this is gonna look like. That's the profit in the process. That's the where it's like, yeah. man, I'm gonna keep my head down. Cause the alternative some point, is unacceptable. Yeah, but that's a per, that yeah. that's to hear though. That's yeah, a personal yeah, yeah. thing to, yeah. to recognize. Like the alternative is unacceptable. Yeah, because there's been those moments where, damn, I don't want to do this next rep. Damn, I don't want to do this, this next, next rep. rep. I went to the gym yesterday. Yes, you know what? I worked out. You know what? I pushed it a little bit. I'm a little sore, and it's easy. Yeah, and. It's acceptable yeah. and understandable to allow yourself to whew, let me yeah. let me slack off a little mm -hmm. bit. Let me do that. You know, and when you I think one of the other guests, man, she said that that was failure. Mm. She spoke to failure being not doing the things for myself that I know will better myself. And that you can do. Yeah. Yeah. That's when she articulated that, I was like, that's what's up. Yeah. Because that's mean, an honest truth to yourself. That's honest truth, yo. dog. And you, only you know it. Yeah, that's the only that, that, that's that's thing. Nothing else, you, nobody hey, else could say something to you because nobody else even knows whether or not you. Because everybody else looking at you like, damn, that boy Ryan put in all them so, reps. And that's, that's, what, that's why I think that, for me, football had to end. Yeah. I knew... I, I'll never let anybody say I wasn't working hard. Yeah. Because I knew I was working hard. Yeah. But I wasn't doing everything. Yeah, I knew. Yeah, I needed to do to be mm -hmm. great. And time to let it go. Then it was like, all right, I gotta let this yeah. go. Cause it, it, the alternative is shoulda, coulda, woulda. Yeah, we don't do bullshit. them. I don't do that. Yeah, we don't do them. Shoulda, coulda, woulda. But that's the word. You don't fuck with that. Mm -hmm. What? You know, you talk about learning, and that being a, the curiosity around learning being a state. That's there. To me, that's the number one pillar in this. Is there a, a thought, a memory? Is there something that created that where you've always felt that Did, was it sparked by something Did something happened I don't know if it was a uh, one event that transpired that was a catalyst but I do remember 
being a kid, probably four years old, maybe four or five years old. And I remember, cause I didn't have a sibling until I was nine. Yeah. So I was by myself till I was nine. So like four or five years old, I remember sitting down. I was sitting down and I was like, there's a me. There's actually a me. Like I got, this is, I got my own hands. Yeah, yeah. I got my own. I, my this this these are these, this is mine. Like there's a me. Huh. What is this? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I wonder if that's real quick. I wonder if that's uh, when they talk about like the the development of the brain mm. when you phase out of that like theta stage. Is that it? when they you know? There you go, Isaac's about. There we go. Let me know, Isaac. That is, did I just make some shit up? Did I just make some shit up? You know, Isaac got a story. I know, about I know. I said, you know, I it's just, crazy when I was in my oh, theta yeah. stage. I, <laughs> did I just make that shit up, Isaac? No, no, you're, I think you're right. I, th- I think so. Yeah, I believe that there's something around the brain because Seiji talks. She there. There was a way that she talks that is like wildly wise around like, huh? She be make. She'll say shit mm. to me that I'll be like. What do you mean? And she looks at me like, well, that's basic, dude. Like, it's stupid. <laughs> yeah. And it's it's almost like she hasn't really acknowledged yet that, like, there's like a, there's this. Yeah, yeah. She's not, she doesn't really know that she's confined. Mm. And that a time, I feel like a lot of times in the relation of kids, when they realize that, oh, I have this body. And that's the spirit, soul, however you want to reference it. Acknowledging it, there also comes along with a like, oh, I, well, I have this body. No, 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 oh, no, 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 no. It's the opposite. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, it's yeah, the opposite. Go, go, go. Okay, it's like now you can do shit I with this. Do well, that's what I said. It's both. This is my yeah. There's a both. Yeah, the thought. yeah, yeah. I think there. I think both comes because with the thought of like, wow, I have this body now. I could do with this. Like, oh, but I have this body and. For the and I think they said that like the theta stage is that you're essentially speaking as if you don't even recognize. This is why I'm mm. like, Sage, why you be fucking your body up so much? Mm. And she is like, I don't know. I just move. Like I'm not trying to mess it up. But she's right. like, but I'm right. doing. Right. And within right. me doing, this is what happens. This is what happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. Now mind your business. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So yeah, speak to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, yeah. So I think that was the that was the first experience I had with curiosity about. Who I was, yeah. I wasn't able to categorize it, label yeah, 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 it, or yeah. identify what exactly was going on. But I was just excited that there was a me, mm-hmm. you know. And I, and further on, you know, I, just like any other kid, I was always why this, why that, you know. And my parents were judicious in how they handled it. I don't know if they were, if it was conscious for them, but you know the. The why was allowed. They supported it. They they supported it to the extent that <laughs> was was reasonable. <laughs> you, you know what I'm saying? Don't 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 get yeah, out of yeah, hand, it's boy. There's a, a story I got, bro. And I've told you. You still were raised in a yeah, southern it's, household. It's still in a southern household, bro. It's a story I, I I tell folks, man, and and this is the this is a prime example of it. I've had to be maybe seven, eight years old. Saturday morning. This is back in the day when cartoons only came on on yeah. Saturday mornings. So I got but my. They were popping. It was popping. They were way better. I got my bowl of cereal, freshly poured, popped down in front of the TV, cartoons. And of course, parents being parents, they picked that time to ask me to take the trash out. <laughs> I'm like, you just saw me <laughs> pour this fresh bowl of cereal. And you know the soggy threshold. The window is only, you know what I'm saying? That, that, that threshold for crunchiness is only going to last for so I, long. I can envision. I know that's what actually was going through your mind. Not that's what you said. Yeah, yeah, but yeah exactly. I ain't say it. But then I said, I said, which I think is a reasonable question even to this day, can I wait until a commercial comes yeah. on to take the trash out? <laughs> reasonable question. <laughs> Very reasonable. Reasonable question. And they're like, no. You need to take the trash out now. Prudent or not prudent, I follow up that demand with another question. 
what's gonna happen to the trash <laughs> between now and a commercial break <laughs> that it needs to it makes it so that it needs to be taken out right My now. My hand of Sajo's <laughs> neck. <laughs> It ain't my, even the my head. foot up your <laughs> yeah exactly. It didn't even need to be said. It was that look. I was like, oh, okay, I'm okay. never gonna take this trash out. You know what I'm saying? But it was it. So I say that to say that why and that curiosity was supported during my upbringing, <laughs> but only to a certain extent. You do all that critical thinking yeah, that we taught you <laughs> as, I, as you taking that trash out. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So, I, and, and in education, and bringing it back, but education was always of the utmost importance what? to my parents. Like, they were like, listen, it wasn't necessarily, I think the, the critical thinking part was kind of implicit, but what was explicit was that you're going, to, you're going to college. Yeah. You don't have that choice. Now, that's not an option. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're going to college. And you, whatever you want to do after college, that's on you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you going? And I remember, I remember uh, a naval recruiter was at the high school, and he, and when you know, I'm, I want to fly jets. Remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I said, did he get I you? See, did he I get see, you for a little bit? Yo, he said, this is what this joker told me, man. I never forget. I know what he looked like to this day. If I see him, I'm on site. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> he older. He told me. If I enlist, I could fly jets. That's how they get you. God, shit. And you know what? How old were you? Young. You know what saved me? You were seventeen. I'm a July baby, so I was young. I was seventeen. Oh, you in high school. So he had to get the up, permission of my parents. Man, that joke came to the house. When my parents realized there was no college degree plan and what he was talking about, now that fool ain't even get to the appetizers for the dinner. Saying it would have been the same shit. He wouldn't yeah. even have made it in my house. My mom would have. Yeah. But how crazy is that? Not to go on a tangent, but how crazy is, like, that's just a whole nother yeah, conversation. Yeah, that's a whole nother conversation you know what I'm about how that's even in any capacity allowed. But, but you know, it's, and, and they, it's and they, intentionally they, they done. They know, the they know. Community. And, and yeah, the yeah, communities yeah, that they're going yeah, into, they know who to yeah, speak they to. Know who to speak they to know who to speak to. They know where they're going. They know where the recruiting service yeah, is set he, up. He know where he was going when he came up to the house that night. I'll tell you that. All right, so. We laughing so much. I got to go to, I want to speak, the last two things I really want to speak to are around like comedy and the role that that's played because I do know you as a very comedic and humorous person <clears throat> and also in relation to community because a lot of the aspects of comedy that we've talked about and how you see it, it has, it's connected individuals and stuff like yeah. that. So. Yeah. What role does comedy have in your world, past, present, future? Uh, what does that look like to you? Well, a lot of us just take ourselves too seriously. You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like I, 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 I'll, I'll own that. You take yourself seriously. I take. Yeah. My, I, there are moments where I definitely have. Like, listen, growing up, I was always a serious kid. I oh would, yeah, yeah, I was yeah, competitive. I wanted to, yeah, I wanted to yeah, get you, after it. Yeah, you and were square. I used to be like, "Yo, what the fuck, man? You were square. Why, bro? Up, probably, but you know what? Probably because you know what? You're, you're right. I probably was a square in some of the ways because I probably I didn't think I was that good at stuff. So I felt like I had to take shit serious to be good. Mm, I see. And when you have a big brother who's fucking good at everything, it's like, all right, well, my <laughs> process looks different. And I can't right. be silly. I realized that real quick. These motherfuckers be playing around. And they, right, right, right. I can't play around yeah, and yeah, be yeah. good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Feel you. I feel so you. it was like, that's to me. So yeah, then I probably over identified with the seriousness yeah, and shit yeah, like yeah. that. No, I feel you. But now we back. I don't, I don't give a fuck. Nigga, so. Yeah. <laughs> now you less square. Yeah, now I'm a little less. I'm like, just I got a little edges. Just a little bit, though. Just a little, just a little bit. But I'll. I'll beat my ass up. <laughs> yo, that that was always it. That was That's always it. Yo, when you get roasted, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so but, like, but can you beat me? You can't beat me. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, for me, dog, I ain't even, I ain't even gonna hold you, bro. The comedy, it started with my pops because he was always, you yeah. know, he still is 
family family gatherings, he was always the one cracking jokes and all yeah. that. And you know, and I could see uh, the positive effect that had on people and the mood. Right. So like I, that's where the foundation of it is from. My mom, she come with the self determination. Like she's the one that's the you know the go getter and all that. Um, but in terms of comedy. It was that as a foundation with my pops. And then, you know, in middle school, man, when you start, <clears throat> you know, checking out these gals, you know what I'm saying? You, you It's like you got, you, it's only a few lanes. I was about to say, how you, many, that, how that many you, skills do you, you have? You know what what can you bring to the yeah, table? What can you bring to the table, bro? And I was, I was not the smooth cat, bro. I was not suave. Bro. Yeah. But I did recognize when I made the girls laugh. Get a little closer. Like, yeah, <laughs> Get a little closer. Buddy, dog. And so I was just like, well, if this is this is how it's gonna be, <laughs> this is how, let me go ahead and focus in on this. And I saw like dudes would be hooping on the court. I'm sitting in the stands with the girls watching. Jaw jacking and cackle yeah, yeah, with yeah. them. And I'm roasting the dudes on the court. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, started in haterade. <laughs> this shit started in haterade. My man was out here. Yo, and I got the got the girls laughing, and you already know yeah, what yeah. kind of Get friction them, and yeah. tension that caused. Hell yeah. Because, you know, dudes, dudes playing on the court with no women around play different yeah. than when the gals are around. You know what I'm saying? It's level, level up. Yeah, it's level up. And now, Ladies, and, go watch your man play. Yeah. He will play better. He will feel better. Damn. But, th but this ain't even... Go watch a man play. This is single dudes yeah, yeah, dude. playing with, with single women, women just, no, yeah, yeah, watching. Yeah, no so they trying to impress. I'm in the stands trying to impress them by making them laugh. So I'm roasting dudes on the court. Don't trust. Also, don't trust the dudes in the stands with your girls while they watching. God. <laughs> they ain't that girls yet. <laughs> so they out there trying to impress them on the court. I'm straight roasting. I'm talking about their game. <laughs> And you know, of course, and these my these, you know, they like partners and whatnot. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah, 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 yeah. Of course. So ain't no venom in it, yeah. you know. And but then them dudes, they like, shut up, Zo, shut up, Zo. <laughs> you ain't on the. That's why you ain't on the court. That's why you ain't on the court. And bruh, and I always, you learn this from riding the back of the bus. You know, you ride the back yeah. of the bus, your you roast, ready, you got, you you got to, to be go. on it. So you learn to always keep a few. In the one in the chamber and a few in the magazine. So them jokers is like, yo, Zo, you ain't out on the court. You can't play. And I said, you right. I'm trying to get you to get past your stage of denial I'm about to, say. to arrive to where I, <laughs> I am at. Yeah. Because you when don't you need don't to realize be out the same there. Thing. Yeah. And then them jokers, the girl just, gah, 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 gah. and you know when they when they hit your knee. And they hit your knee, boy. It's like, oh, it's on. Oh, so <laughs> that's like this. Let me this. get a little. Yeah, yeah, let me get a little school right, a little <laughs> See how dudes do everything for women? Oh, yeah. Oh, that curiosity. <laughs> I mean, it was legit. I was like, making girls laugh is what helped me draw their attention. Yeah. You know? This is a beautiful thing. But I tried, yeah. to be, I tried to be smooth. That shit did not work out. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't, let this, don't let this buttery voice fool you. I was chill. <laughs> I'm the I'm the dude that just talked. It on was the RV deep, album. but it wasn't always no buttery. The voice, but yeah, yeah it was, it was, that, was exactly. What does community hold within you right now? Oh, uh, it's it's everything. You know, I, you know, it's no secret that as you get older, your circle of friends becomes smaller, and that's not necessarily true. Yeah, but for the most part, you mm -hmm. know, it, it one you don't have the capacity to engage as many people on a deeper level, on a deep level, like a friendship should. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. And so, at this stage in my life, the what has meaning to me is those friendships. You know, like you know, my my brothers are out here. Yeah. You know, this is the first time that all three of us have lived in the same city as adults. Yeah. You know, which is actually the same city, period. Um, which is powerful to me you know and and like when I have pot like I don't consider you to be just a friend yeah. like to like you a brother you know you know we 
we joke, we jaw jack and cackalack, but if the shit hits the fan, I know if I call you yeah. or if I text you and be like, hey, yo, I need you right now. You ain't, I ain't even got to say why. Nope. You know? And you, you'll you text me back, and if I don't respond, you probably be here in 10 minutes or however long it take you to get here from wherever you are. You know what I'm saying? Already. And I think earlier in life, uh, that meant something, but it didn't mean as yeah, it didn't much. hold as much weight. It didn't hold as much weight because when we talk about what the things that how we t- you know earlier on we talked about how none of this matters, right? At some point, you and I go in the dust. We here right now. Yeah. So what matters right so now? So what too? what matters right now is making the most of it. Yeah. What matters right now is me having this conversation with you. What matters right now is a relationship that I've established with Nelly and Isaac because of this podcast. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You don't need to be here for me to connect with them. You know what I'm saying? And I don't, I, you know. Don't be having conversations without me, though. But yeah, I'm with that. But I agree. <laughs> Too late. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, 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 at this stage in life, community is such a beautiful thing because hopefully most of us kind of understand who we are to a certain extent. Yeah. Obviously, I don't, you know, I don't know a lot yeah. about myself. And that's the worthwhile journey that we were talking about is self-discovery just continues and continues and continues. But at this stage in life, when you meet someone and you click, that connection is much stronger than it than clicking when you 22 right. at a beach party with yeah, a partner yeah, <laughs> that y'all just checking out this, you know, the same group of chicks. Yeah. That ain't no real connection. Yeah. Cause we don't know who we are. We don't, you know what I'm saying? But at this stage, if I meet somebody and connect, it's like finding money in my pocket that I didn't know was there but I could use. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Oh, this 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 friendship that we form and this connection could be strong, even though I ain't known you but for three days, five days, because I met you through somebody that I rock with. You well, know? Can you give the audience for so that they understand? in a few words, what community is to you at this point in time in your world? A dope-ass quilt with some strong fabric. If you, I love you that. Yeah. Said, <laughs> if you cold, you can wrap yourself say. in it. If it's hot, you can pitch a tent yeah, and make some what, shade. What you need when you need it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Give me something about your process right now that you really love, dude, that... uh that you're engaged in and you're enjoying? About my process? Yeah. Knowing. A lot of, a lot of us, I don't want to, let me not generalize folks, but for me, I didn't, for a long time, I didn't recognize that, I didn't really comprehend the idea that the word K-N-O-W is a verb. Like knowing is an action. Exactly, yeah. So what is it that you are doing? Like how, what, if you had to describe to someone, what is it that you are doing in the action of knowing, how would you describe it? Because I can, I can, on a basic level, describe what I'm doing when I'm walking. I plant the left foot, distribute the weight to that foot while I propel the right foot forward, mm-hmm. and I do that in a repetitive motion. Obviously, it's probably much more, yeah, I can yeah, yeah, do yeah. a better job, but on a basic level. But so... In the same way, how do you describe the process of knowing? Because learning, knowing is a part of that. And so what what is taking place when you are knowing? What do you think? The action of knowing, I think it's like this, you, what would you how would you describe it? How would I describe knowing? Accumulating. I think it's an accumulation of ideas and thoughts, and the accumulating is the action. Where I'm pulling from thoughts and pulling mm-hmm. from, and that's why you know when you get back to the five percent of stuff, <laughs> <laughs> the knowing is the first step, and it's not always linear. 
but for a lot of times, knowing is usually the first step in regards to interest. Yeah, yeah. I have to familiarize myself yeah, yeah, yeah. with something to yeah. know. So yeah. I look at it as um, I have to accumulate. And accumulation may be just the energy of it. Mm -hmm. I got to accumulate mm -hmm. time and space. I got to accumulate. Mm -hmm. um, and then within that, there's the action of now that you've accumulated, what do you do with that action? Mm -hmm. And for me, the act, is in the wisdom. But you went 5% for real. I know, I'm certified. <laughs> and I, this is the, my, the background that I have. I'm sorry. No need Let's to debunk it. And then within the action, then you it gains the wisdom mm -hmm. through action. Mm -hmm. And then the understanding, because to me, understanding is self. Mm -hmm. realization mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so when you actualize that wisdom that you have through action you process it in self and you mix it up and that's the alchemy the alchemy mm -hmm. that happens mm -hmm. and then you have an understanding where now you can voice it as you mm -hmm. and you're speaking from an <clears throat> internalized actualized alchemy space of oh I understand this Ooh, the boy, the boy it, that trying to spit. For me, the act of knowing, because all of that, all of what you said, I agree with. Yeah. Um, in the act of knowing, there's one specific thing that is very important to me, and that's questioning. Word. I don't. I don't. I don't have a journal. But people are like, Alzo, you should journal. And I think I should journal more. But when I read, I just have questions. Like, I got a notebook. So you write there. in your, your journals are your books. My journals, my journals are the books. questions that but I you write. You in your books. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Like, I could, I could, I mean, we don't have time, but I could go get a, I could go pull a notebook right now and just flip and ask, and, and just a question just general no, about I, life. A thousand percent. Yo, so. That's actually how I journal, dude. I, yeah, I write a question. Yeah, I was just talking about this the other day. Well, but we're really... not, we're not. You already had your answer. God, Remember, it's my yo, turn. Remember? Yeah, shit. Okay, go for it. <laughs> did your, I know this is your podcast, but you invited me on here to give my. I perspective. appreciate. You know what? Because yes, you're forcing me to listen. Because it's dragging along, so I got to actively engage. Bro, I didn't. I didn't watch some of your podcasts. <laughs> Them jokers be three hours with no intermission. Your guests over here blatter about the bus, but you still talking about yourself. So let me get my. Oh, uh, you, you got know, yeah. Let me get yo. Go ahead, man. Get it off. You, I mean, you you know you got it. You got this. This is your world, brother. I'm just in it all just day. In it. It's your this world. This day, if these cameras weren't here, me and my partner, we'd be still doing it. Then we go put a yeah. Then we, we go. We're then we gonna go to the mat. We, yeah. <laughs> go ahead. Finish, my brother. <laughs> What's the math, my brother? Uh, no, but it's seriously the for me. The act of knowing questions are of the utmost importance. I and appreciate that. So yeah. when you when you raise a question, you then answer it, but then you have to question your answer. So is it really possible to arrive at absolute no. knowledge? And that's the bittersweet aspect of all of this. Is like like scientists, bro. Sci all some, that shit is theory, bro. They like this. This shit is fact right now. Right now. And then, bruh, the earth was flat for a minute. And then all of a sudden, it was. Bruh, Pluto was a planet. What happened to Pluto, dog? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still hurt over that. You know? Yeah, I still claim but, it. I'm like, it ain't, it ain't right, going right. nowhere. It's here. But the all BS aside, it's when you look at people's ideologies, if they were really critical about what they believe, why they believe it, why they think the way that they think, if they if they would raise questions around that and be honest, then they will come to an answer. And then raise questions about that. Okay, I was I believe this because my great grandfather told my grandparents this, and they told my parents this, and yeah. which is fine as a foundation, but in order to understand 
why you are who you are and what you do what you do is proper. Yeah, that's the whole notion around why. Bro, how why, do you why come to gods or what they are? No, how do you how do you come to know? Who, we ain't even talking about outside. How do you come to know who you are? You got to ask yourself some serious questions. So the act of knowing to me, it is imperative that questions are a priority. Yeah, and questions that you may be afraid to ask because you don't want to hear the answer, but you ain't going to get nowhere without that friction. He said that his response wasn't deeper than mine. That shit is way deeper than mine. Well, then you need to get out the shallow end if you I consider know. that to be deep. I know. Take off, take off them floaties, take homie. Take off them floaties because depth is relative <laughs> to how well you swim. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I say. Huh? I'll be honest with you. I'm not a fan of this. I'm on that, bro. <laughs> Huh? Sip some on that, boy. Huh? Uh, you know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. That's the liquor of life. All right, so with that being said, you talked about your process of knowing that you love. Tell me something about your process right now that you don't necessarily love. Or... The same thing. <laughs> the, 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 the same thing I love is the nerves. same thing I do not yeah, love, bro. Damn. Huh? Because once you start, you can't stop. So what do you do with that? Bruh, you, you, you know about sometimes I just be tired, bro. <laughs> you be tired talking to yourself. Yeah, yeah. Why you want to? You be like, man. Why you do this to me? <laughs> it's, 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 it's like, and it's not to not to belittle or to put to make this a hierarchy, but there, I look at some people, man, who are content with just spending money that they don't have to impress people that just don't care. And they blissfully live in their lives, you know, on social media, and, yeah. like, and they and they engage in the materialistic things of of existence and all that. I'd be like, man, <laughs> bliss is not all that bad. But then, yeah. but it's very expensive. Not not even no, monetarily. I know what you mean. You know yeah, what yeah, I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, like, yeah. It comes you, with a major it, cost, bro. A mega cost, mega cost. So I'd rather put in the work. I mean, it's the same. But we're talking about jujitsu, martial arts. My body hurts after a workout, but you keep doing it because there is no change. There's no growth without friction. Yeah. You sitting at this desk, you sitting in your crib, and you reading, and you like, man, man, Ryan put me on this book. Yo, Ryan put me on this book. He say, this book is dope. I open the book. I'm like, what the fuck is this joker saying? Ryan figured it out. Why can't I figure it out? This, this is tough. All right. You got to get back in it. Roll your sleeves up and figure it out. That I don't like that part. But it's like it's like uh, um, Serena Williams said. She said she hate the train, but she like winning. Word. What you willing to do? What you willing to do? And I want to know more about who I am. I want to know more about this world. And I until I figure out a better way... These books and this self analysis and critical thinking is is the root. Word. Not bad, buddy. Not bad. You got it. You all right. Bruh. You all right. I'm about to slap you with this book. Hey, I'm just saying. But it, it, this thing. All right, boss. So you got more questions? I got one more. And this is the heavy hitter. And well, you can do I'll whatever. be the judge of that. Oh, yo. This is from there. <laughs> this is what you usually have stairs for. Yeah. yeah, I know. It's like, go go sit in the chair. <laughs> All right, Zoe. So, so uh, final question, boss. You told me what you do. Who are you? <laughs> See, this <is> stupid ass. <laughs> and you say, you guys, who, 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 who are you? What does bro, that even that's, mean? That's, that's I, like I want to know. A, I know. See, there we go. That's that, a damn that impossible question to answer. Exactly. Because the way so, I answer it, usually it will be what I am and not who I am. So? So who I am is you. Sit in silence. I'm say, you. Say, say, There we go, my man. I'm you. I'm Nelly. I'm Isaac. I'm that conservative dude, that Republican that I interviewed. And the more I learn about That's you, wild. the more I learn about Nelly, the more I learn about Isaac, the more, the, the more I learn about the world, it reciprocates because I'm learning more about me because all of us are one. So... The only way I can answer that question is of who I am is that I'm all of y'all clowns. And there you have it. 
wise words from Alzo Slade, which I agree with and I appreciate. That's why I need you to answer it. As ridiculous as the question is. But but I, I won't say no, I didn't say the question is ridiculous. You I said it's pretty much impossible to answer. Oh, you answer. did say that. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. No, I wouldn't, yeah. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say it's, well, it's I don't funny. think many right. questions are ridiculous. Okay, but, I feel you. But you know I do I do think it's I agree with you. It is an impossible way. Yeah, because so, if I say I'm Alzo Slade, that's just what I'm called. That's yeah. not who I am. But it's to me, it is essentially how people see. All these all these questions are kind of like yeah. weird. But it's around like what it does is it gives them an opportunity to actually frame how they see the world, how they yeah. see themselves in relation to the question. Because, you know, you, how many times I ask people questions about success? Somebody could be like, I'm alive. Successful. <laughs> right, 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 right. Like that's, it, it's kind of like right. whatever. And it, I love about this conversation and these conversations is that I, there's no answer. There's answers, yeah, but yeah, there yeah. is no answer yeah, that yeah. it's like, there you go. What a, how can people get in contact with you, the people that you don't want to get killed? <laughs> what a, how can people get in contact with you, the people that you don't want to get killed? <laughs> how can oh, people, if you how, want to get in contact with me, it's Alzo Slade at Hotmail. <laughs> <laughs> Blackplanet.com. <laughs> Black Black yeah, MySpace. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. AOL.net. <laughs> nah, I'm on, I'm on, uh, Instagram at Alzo Slade, A L Z O S L A D E. And if I got stuff coming up, that's usually where you see it. Um, I appreciate you, dog. Thank you, brother. You yeah, have no man. idea, man. For real, I appreciate you. And, um, dude, he's my, he doesn't even realize, but we're partners in a whole bunch of stuff in the future. So, uh, look forward to. Don't be laughing. Yo, why you laugh, yo? Because Nelly already know what I'm thinking. Yeah. Jeez.